I just had him on my uh, Big Fanboy livecast, my uh, 300th episode, which you can find on BigFanboy.com's archive if you want to hear that interview. Um, but he's going to come up here, and uh, I'm, I'm honored to call this guy a friend. Uh, he's a good guy. It's not just because we share a love of fine cigars. Um, you can take that however you want. <laughs> but uh, you know, he's a really, he's a genuinely great human being. It's a wonderful treat to have him back with us, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Ball. Ha, 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 ha. 
giant twin bodybuilders and uh, Joel Schumacher. It was it was great. It was hilarious, but I was a bit overwhelmed. Yeah. All right, fans, questions. I'm gonna tell you, you can't see them, so you have to imagine what your inquisitors look like. Your back, your back, your back look very well. Extremely well. well. Great shot. Right over here, start up with Richard. Hey, um, I also think that if you move to Texas for like seven months out of the year, you can have a lot of those kind of stuff. <laughs> the thing is, even if I work in California, they get you. Yeah. Uh, I just started following you on Twitter at uh -oh. Being you on Friday, and uh, that gets awesome. I love it. Um, I wonder <laughs> if uh, Manu Nestor, I've been retweeting your stuff, but uh, I wonder, <laughs> how much trouble does this cause you um, with uh, working in, in LA and Hollywood? Still working. <laughs> Hollywood is a liberal town, but there's, I mean, there's, a, there's a very apolitical element where people don't even care, you know, what side of the coin it falls on, and a lot of conservatives who are very vocal about their political beliefs. It, it, caught, it doesn't cause as much trouble as you would think. I would, I would. Imagine. Well, just be nice about it. Just explain the truth nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Right over here. Howdy, Adam. Uh, Howdy. My question is a little obscure. What was it like to work on Independence Day? It was a great reunion for me with uh, my, my pal Dean Devlin, who's the producer of that. Uh, he was, his father produced my bodyguard, and he worked on the show. He was one of the, he was actually a little bit part in it, but he was behind the scenes working a lot, helping us rewrite stuff, and we became fast friends. Best man at my wedding, uh, godfather of my kids, all that. So it's, it's good to have people like that in your lives. They hire you. Um, <laughs> so it was it was a really great reunion. And Roland Emmerich was the director, and he's hilarious. Um, it was just a uh, you know a character right in my wheelhouse. So <laughs> I do look. Back, I've learned a little more about military protocols since then. There are a few things I've learned. You know, one is you don't salute. Uh, you're not wearing a cover. <laughs> so it's like, oh, why don't you know, you guys are supposed to tell me this stuff. But no. So it's their fault, not mine. Uh, <laughs> take full responsibility for that. Uh, the aliens, the alien scene where they're uh, killing Brent Spiner was probably my favorite. <laughs> having to flap the tentacles. <laughs> and you see guys working out with ropes, you know, they do this, and it's the shoulders, they go. And so, Roland, the director, he saw that, and he was watching them, just making them do it over and over and over. <laughs> you could see them fatiguing, and he would yell at them, get the tentacles up higher. <laughs> faster with the tentacles, faster. Meanwhile, <laughs> They let me have the coup de gras shot on the alien. We shot that second unit. It was sort of said, could I do that? Because that's something Mitchell would do. He'd walk in there and he'd, he'd finish that uh, that alien off. Which is, you know, it, it portends that hot lead is always going to be useful. In the game. So, uh, lasers, not so much. Hot lead, yeah, like in Firefly, we got hot lead. It works. <laughs>
It, it existed. It was not uh, animated. How <laughs> strange was it to see yourself in this giant statue? <laughs>
little street scenes and working with the guns with him, the way Nathan, Nathan's so good with props and comedy and timing, that the way he was just like, didn't know how to handle the gun and he, knows, <laughs> he acts like he does it very well. So um, that whole barroom fight scene where he's getting beat up, I'm just kind of eating the peanut, like, yeah, you're doing great. Uh, that, was, that was probably one of my favorite things. <laughs> down on the ground and he, he got bruised and banged up. He, he goes for it. Well, I 
think were you bigger than your brothers? What's that? Were you bigger than your brothers? Or was one of the not when I was bigger. No, they're older. No, not when I was growing up. Alright. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> when did you hit your genes? Okay. <laughs> your genetics. Oh god, I don't know, maybe uh probably from conception. <laughs> I grew. I got bigger than them probably when I was 18. I grew up bigger. Hi, uh, Full Metal Jacket. The reason a lot of us joined the military. Uh, you look like you knew your way around the weapon systems. What sort of training did you receive? <clears throat> well, if you look at that show again, you'll see my trigger discipline is a little weak. Uh, <laughs> uh, this was the. I had a little bit. You know, I, I knew how the. Uh, the M60, you know, I could break it down and put it back together and stuff, but I'm, I'm not well, very well trained. I, you know, I know the weapon systems that I have, but I'm not, I'm by no means a, a gun geek uh, or a very well trained military guy, full respect. I just, I know what I know and I, I'm a pretty good shot, but, you know, I, I don't spend a lot of time tinkering. So I, I'm, what would I call myself? A, uh, Intermediate, not quite expert level. How's that? Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Was that a Dale Dye movie? Was he the military advisor on that one? No, Lee Irby. Lee Irby was the uh, he was the TA. So, uh, but he was busy getting ready. He was getting ready uh, his other his other role. So there were some there were some little trigger disciplines and muzzle managements that dropped out. And he <coughs> just made some mistakes. <laughs> yeah, so. It's a movie. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Um, I just want to say, um, ask, I, I know you did some voice acting in like um, Mass Effect and Half-Life and stuff like that, and I was going to say, did you ever like play any of these and then like, you know, you have the, the weirdness of, that's my voice going at me. The fun thing about doing voiceover acting is that you get to go to a room and not have to shave. So, <laughs> it's a booth with microphones and you get to work with really talented voice actors. And you don't have to worry about what you look like or, you know, smell is important. Uh, so we, we brush our teeth before we go in there, but shaving is not a priority. Uh, and you work with strictly talented people. So that, that's what's most fun for me because on camera there are constraints, you know, height constraints, beauty constraints, and sometimes the talent can be a little less than. Uh, I won't name names. How <laughs> 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 I don't know. Um, Nathan, call me. Um, <laughs>
carry the show on his shoulders was Yvonne Strahovski, when the cameras weren't rolling because her character was constrained the way it was, was is one of the funniest people I've ever met. You know, she has that body, like Carol Burnett sense of humor, uh, Lucille Ball sense of humor, and this beautiful blonde woman's you know package, and she's just hilarious. But you know, kind of with a like dirty sense of humor too. <laughs> but you just don't. It's just discordant. So you know, if you meet her sometime, just she'll she'll knock your socks off. <laughs> All right, this is not my, my original question, but since Nathan brought it up, can I have that kiss on the cheek? What? <laughs> can I have that kiss on the cheek since Nathan brought it up? Just big bubble, just 
repeating himself. <laughs> With your experiences working on sets like that, did you ever have any inclination to start doing training for stunts, being a part of the guild, or doing any of that? Hell no. <laughs> uh, I don't like uh, falls, uh, and I'm not too partial to car crashes or fire. Uh, although I did a smoke jumper movie uh, for uh, In the Line of Duty series, and I did learn that if you have good Nomex on and the fire is somewhat controlled and contained, you're not going to catch on fire. You can run past it as long as it's not too big and windy. And uh, that was actually pretty cool. And they didn't let me jump out of the aircraft. I did, I did skydive one time. When I came down, I wrecked my knee. I, I never did. I was 17 years old, and my brother's buddy, he was going into the Air Force. Before, they, before he went off, he said, Come on, little Baldy, let's go jump out of an airplane. <laughs> okay, no, you sure. It's cool, let's do that. So they put us on a static line and jump. We jumped out of 3,000 feet. Canopy. Canopy. Excellent. All right. I am not going to make that landing zone. Nope, I'm going down to this plowed field. Oh, and it's uneven, and it's November, and your knee is wrecked. Because yeah. I was a big guy, they put me by the door, so I had to go out first. And uh, all the other guys are like, oh, well, Baldwin's at Streamer, and so he landed there, so we got to drop you guys here perfect. <laughs> so they all had a nice, soft landing zone, and they did it a couple extra times, you know. So. A couple of surgeries later. Meanwhile, you're the crash test dummy. Yeah, the crash test dummy. Uh, I can't even remember why I got off on that tangent now. Stunning. Stunning. No. Hi, uh, Adam. <laughs> um, it's kind of become tradition here to ask Firefly uh, members who come to tell their favorite Adam Baldwin story. <laughs> so this is. What was your favorite prank that you played? And then what favorite prank do you have that was either played on you or you witnessed happening? So it's kind of a two-parter. Well, not much of a prankster besides what Nathan's uh, gummy worm was on. I liked it. <laughs> he, was, he loved his truck. He loved that new truck so much that uh, he bragged about it all the time. God, he's like, yeah, we got a new series and a new truck, and he was so happy about it. And then, after gummy worms on the windshield, and someone we're not sure put big zip ties on his crankshaft underneath, so I'm clacking and clacking and clacking the sun. Oh! I think someone let the air out of his tires. He was like, you got it. Favorite Adam Baldwin story. <laughs> the speed metal keeps coming up. Out Which one? Your uh, your penchant for playing speed metal out of your trailer at odd hours of the morning when the remainder of your cast members are trying to sleep. Yeah, I mean they would come they would come to work and sleep. It's like what are you doing? <laughs> You're getting amped up, man. This is this is this is serenity, man. This is a big big movie. You gotta be amped up. You gotta crank that Metallica. Come on. Woo! And none of them they, they didn't have the courage to come up and go, would you want to just dial me back today? No, they, so they come to the conventions and they hit me from behind. They want to ambush me on the Metallica thing. Dude, now I'm listening to some really hardcore stuff. My son, my son is a speed metal drummer. He likes Hardcore thrash, death metals, dude. The lyrics, I don't know what the hell they're saying. He goes, you don't want to know what they're saying. Man. Just listen to the music. No, okay, okay, music's cool. So, they're lucky that I'm not in this phase of my musical aficionado. Right over here.
see, if I had to pick a favorite Pop-Tart flavor, it'd probably be strawberries. Yeah, I like... Uh, pie or cake? Pie! Yes. Yeah. 